Hey, every, hey everyone, how you doing today? It's Michael Zuber, one rental at a time. And as mentioned on the daily financial news, we start off strong with our expert series with Mr. Greg Dickerson. How you doing, sir? Doing great. I start <laughs> off every Monday in the gym first, getting ready for this. Oh, there you go. Lift heavy. <laughs> That's awesome. So, hey, I actually went back and listened to our first interview, right? We didn't know each other. We'd never spoken. Uh, I think we got connected by a mutual friend. And mm -hmm. I think that I think the title of your your video, if anybody wanted to search it, is "Truck in a Toolbox," something like that. And your story was kind of the American dream, right? Uh, first off, you you graduate, you you serve in the military, you come back, you you do your you do your day job, you bust your ass, and then you have kind of you know friends around you doing real estate, and you start pitching in and trying to learn. And next thing you know, you want to go build some houses, and you never done that before, so you build a network and. And, and the long story short is you risk your capital, your, your efforts, you go, you go all in, you talk about at one point, you know, you risked it all when you had, you know, little ones at home and, you know, all of that. And then you build a company, you know, doing nine figures, it was worth nine figures, right? Hundreds of millions of dollars and, and you sell. And the reason I did that is I was, I was feeling like a success was being attacked. I think for the first time in my adult life, uh, it's, it's cool to attack success. And I'm not down with that. So I just needed, I needed some good Greg Dickerson, like mojo this weekend. So I, I went back and listened to that video because I think risk, risk capital going, betting on yourself is important. So what I wanted to ask you today, if you had to start that journey again today, you can know all you know now, uh, but you got to start it today. And you know, you can be 30 years old or whatever you want again. Uh, would anything change in your story? Would you change anything? Would you I don't know, would you stay in the restaurant industry because the big bad tax man is coming after you? I mean, just, what would change if you wanted to start today? I would have bought Dogecoin two months before today, <laughs> knowing what I know now, put everything I had into it, borrowed every nickel I could borrow, and then sold at 70 cents yeah. right before Saturday Night Live. Yeah, That's right. what I would do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, yes. You'd be a trillionaire if you did something like that. Uh, yeah, let, let's, let's keep it. Let's, that's awesome. <laughs> Uh, but again, though, if you were going to start, would I guess the first question is, would you, would you still do real estate? I mean, you've talked before about you know you'd go to Wall Street, but let's remember you had a kid, you were out of the military, or you had mm -hmm. a couple of children, I believe, and you know, would anything change? Would you bother building a big business? Would you go all virtual or, or 1099s to start? I mean, how how did the Amer what I consider you as the American dream or a, a result of effort and risk and you know just stick to itness? Would, would you change your story at all if you had to start today? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I know more now and I know how to do what I didn't know how to do back then. And, you know, the American dream. So, you know, like a lot of people think home ownership is the American dream. That's not the American dream. OK, you know, the American dream is what you just said. It's the opportunity to create whatever you want out of your life through hard work. It's mm -hmm. you know, that's what this country was built on. People came here for you know freedom of religion, freedom of oppression, you know, freedom from taxes and, you know, and all that. But the American dream is the dream that anybody can start with absolutely nothing and build whatever they want. And that's what I did. I started with absolutely nothing. I had no backers. I had no, uh, you know, entrepreneurs in my family. My parents were, you know, my dad was career military. My mom was career Blue Cross Blue Shield. You know, I did it all the hard way. I didn't go to college. I went in the Navy right out of high school, learned a lot of great lessons in the Navy. I did take some classes in the Navy. I was trained, you know, I did retail in the Navy. So I had accounting classes and all that. So I had a general basic understanding of business. And then I worked in the corporate world for a while in the restaurant industry, always had a side business. And I worked a lot. I worked 12 to 16 hours a day, some days, 18 to 20 hours. It lit, yes, I only had four hours of sleep. I would work like when I had my little side business and I was doing some government contracting after the military, I'd go do these jobs and I'd be four or five hours away from home. And instead of coming back the next day, and, you know, hotel room, this, that, and the other, or travel, I would just stay till midnight. I got there at seven in the morning. I would stay till midnight, finish the job, and then I'd drive home. Mm -hmm. So there were days that I worked like that in the restaurant industry when I was opening restaurants. I mean, I was working, you know, 18 hours a day from seven in the morning till midnight. I'd go home, sleep a few hours, get up at five or six to be back in there at seven. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's all about hard work. It's all about, you know, educating yourself, pouring in yourself. So I had no backing. I had no credit, really. I had no, you know, support from anybody. I just did what I did by working hard, by learning fast, 
you know, by <clears throat> taking chances, taking risk. I mean, I financed my first construction company with credit cards. Um, you know, I did have a little bit of an equity line in my house. We'd bought a house and, you know, had like $20,000 worth of equity. So I, I got an equity line. I used that. I used credit cards. I did zero financing on vehicles, you know, to grow my fleet as I was growing. And then I reinvested the profits and I started multiple companies that created cash flow. So I had multiple streams of income coming in from different, different businesses to reinvest into real estate and other assets. But um, the bottom line was while I was working in the corporate world, I was educating myself um, and I always had a side business to create income. And then I was reinvesting that, you know, to start at the time other businesses until I learned about and found real estate as an investment because I didn't even know, mm. you know, that was a thing most of my young life until I did my first lot flip mm. that a friend of mine who was a realtor helped me do. And then I was getting into construction. So I learned how to, you know, buy houses, renovate them and, and sell them working for other people. And then I learned about spec house building, working for other builders, trimming houses, you know, I'm like, you know, just talking to them. What do you guys do? Oh, we build them, we sell them. I'm like, you mean you're not building for somebody? No, you know, it's called a spec house. I'm like, what's a spec house, you know? <laughs> so, you know, that's kind of how I learned and, and learned it all the hard way. And, you know, the harder I worked and the more that I reinvested, the more things grew. Now, what I would do different that I didn't know back then was that you could raise money from private investors to scale. I was using all my own money, mm. whatever I made, you know, from my other businesses and my investments, I would go to the bank. I was the one signing on the loan. So I didn't know initially how to leverage and that I could bring investors in. I didn't know how to raise capital. I didn't know how to get, you know, alternative financing to bank financing. I didn't know what private lending was or hard money or any of that. Mm -hmm. um, and then I started doing deals with um, a friend of mine who was a developer in Northern Virginia. And then he kind of taught me about leverage and then how to use, you know, private lenders. Mm -hmm. Turned out our lumber company had a loan program, which is basically a hard money program. They were asset based lending programs, mm -hmm. not based on your income, or your credit score is based on the project. You still had to guarantee the loan, but it wasn't, you know, about your net worth or any of that. It was about the value of the project and you had to buy the building materials from the from them and a lot of lumber companies still do that today hmm. so that's a for anybody listening that's a great construction loan program if you're a builder and you need funding you can get it from your lumber supplier a lot of times you know not your home depots and your lows but you know professional uh, building supply companies have construction loan pro programs for their builders so yeah. i started learning how to do that but if i could go back and do it all over again i would have went straight into land development straight into commercial multifamily at a large scale and done just the big stuff and stayed on that path. You know, I read Sam Zell's book along the way, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how to do what he was doing. I didn't know that it was possible. And Sam Zell started with college rental houses and built and grow, grew and scaled from there. So um, it was later in my life when I learned how to do all that stuff. And now that's what I teach other people how to do. But um, that's what I would do. If I could yeah. do it all over, I'd go big. I'd start big, you know, because again, you're saying knowing what I know now, yeah. I don't have the training or the pedigree to go to Wall Street. So right. that's that's not in the cards for me. Business and real estate is what's in the cards for me. So that's what I would do over again. But that yeah. I would just go bigger. Bigger, faster. Yep. Yeah. So I want to I want to go back to a couple of things just to reiter reiterate them. First off, the American dream gets thrown around a lot. And, and it is what you want it to be, right? If your goal, right, right is to own your own home, that's your American dream. And I applaud you for it. If your dream is to create a business and, you know, do millions of dollars, great for you. If your dream is to go to college or your dream, or your, your dream is for your kids to go, to go to college. We don't tell you in America, we don't tell you what the dream is. It is for right. you to decide. That's and, the American dream. You can yeah. do whatever you want. If it's a house, business, whatever, whatever that is. Yeah, totally agree. But here's the deal, right? A dream without a date, a dream with all, you know, it's just that it's just a dream. And what you did before, and again, I went back on purpose to listen to our video from like almost 20 months ago, I think, almost two years, to, to what you just went through is it takes risk and sacrifice. Nothing you did before, nothing you would do now is riskless. Uh, none of it is easy, right? It takes time and takes hustle. Um, it just seems like, like hard work's not cool today. Um, well, there was nobody handing me anything. So I had to go knock on doors, make cold calls. I had, you know, I came up with the concept. So how does a business start? How does it happen? A lot of people don't know how to do that. So number one, it was the idea. Yep. Okay. I needed to get some work done on my house. When I started my construction company, I was working in restaurants at the time and I was contemplating, I wanted to open a restaurant. 
and the area I was in, that was real limited. So, I'm, you know, I'm trying to get some work done at my house. Nobody would return my phone call. Everybody was so busy. I started talking to my neighbors. They're like, oh, yeah, you can't get anybody to do anything. They're so busy. Mm. So where there's a problem, there's an opportunity. So I'm thinking, OK, I've got some skills. I've always had these side businesses in construction while I've been working in restaurants. So why don't I set up a little construction company? So, OK, what are you going to name it? Right. So that's the first thing you need to think about is hmm. branding. And you need to think about a name and you need a name that at the end of the day, when you start a business, you're going to exit it one way or the other. You might as well build a brand that has value for an exit mm. for a liquidity event. So I thought, OK, so what's going to make me sound like I've been here forever? What's going to create a brand that's not based on me and my name? Uh, so I thought of, you know, the area was the Outer Banks of North Carolina. So I said Outer Banks Construction. Nobody had that name. So wow. instantly it sounded like I was in business forever. Right. Forever. Who has yeah. that name. Exactly. Yeah. So it's that's just crazy. like everybody's like, man. The only downside was there was an Outer Banks Homes and there was an Outer Banks uh, Contractors and they had gone out of business. So a lot ah. of people thought that was, you know, but anyways, it made me sound like I was there forever. So yeah. I created the name. I went and registered the name at the courthouse, which in my area, that's what you had to do. There was no internet at the time. So I didn't get a domain name or a website. Nowadays, you get the domain name, make sure that's available. Then you register with the uh, State Corporation Commission in your area. So then I filed that, you know, corporation back when I started out as a sole proprietor before I did that. Um, and, you know, I had all my books done by hand, yeah. all that. So anyways, you know, where there's a problem, there's an opportunity. So I went out, created business cards and my tagline, because the number one complaint was nobody will call you back. They're so busy. They answer the phone, they go do that. Then they come back and they answer it for the whoever's next. So you could call, leave messages. They would not call you back or people mm. would call you back and they wouldn't show up. So on my business card, Outer Banks Construction, Greg Dickerson had my cell number and it said, I will call you back. Nah, there you go. <laughs> you know, and I will show up. I can't remember if it was, I will show up or I will call you back, but that was on my business card. Wow. And I was handing that out to people, letting them know, hey, you need a window replaced, a door fixed, you know, whatever you need done, I'll do. A hundred dollar job, $50 job, whatever it was, had no license, had no insurance, just a little sole proprietor with my little ledger book, hmm. you know, writing down, you know, handwritten estimates and keeping the books. And, um, and then about six months in, you know, I'd started generating a little bit of income and um, I decided to hire a bookkeeper part time. You know, so I brought her on part time and she started keeping the books and I bought my first computer you know, for, that, for the business and you know, had that going on. You're, uh, you're a dinosaur, Greg. Least... You're, you're dating yourself. I bought my oh, first yeah, computer. Yeah. And I remember it was a um, it was a gateway. If you guys remember oh, gateway did. computers, do, you know, where you could order them online and customize them. And you know, competitor for Dell. Computer. Yeah. Yeah. It was a competitor yeah. for Dell. Yeah. That's funny. exactly. That was my first computers. And, uh, you know, got that. And the bookkeeper started getting us up and running on computers and oh, and. Uh, you know, then she, you know, eventually went full time. I got a little office warehouse. I remember signing that lease for $800 a month. I was scared to death thinking, yeah. Man, how am I going to pay 800 bucks a month, you know, and did that. And then just, you know, yeah. grew and scaled from there. So yeah, it was all about getting out, knocking on doors, creating, you know, finding a, a problem that you could solve, you know, creating that opportunity, but then going out and knocking on doors and letting people know, here's what I do. I put ads in the paper. I put ads in the phone books as I you know, had the money to do it. Mm -hmm. I bought tools as I went along. I bought vehicles as I went along, leveraged everything I had. Now, here's the big part. I made hardly any money mm. that, first, that first couple of years, maybe 50 grand a year. That was what I was paying myself, you know, a thousand bucks a week. Yeah. That's about all I was making for the first couple of years. Didn't take a vacation, didn't go anywhere. We lived at the beach, so you didn't really need to. <laughs> Yeah. Just go outside. <laughs> yeah, cry me a river, but I never went to the beach, never enjoyed it. You know, I mean, I was working. Yeah, yeah. I was working, building this company, building this company. That's awesome. And I think after it was either three or four years in when I built it up and I had a team of about 10 to 12 people working for me and I was finally able to go take a vacation. And I, I remember that, you know, being able to just go away for a week, take a vacation. I came back, pulled my employees together and I just thanked them. I said, you know what? It's the first vacation I've been able to have with my family and my kids, you know, in like four years. And I just wanted to thank everybody for their contribution and all that. But yeah, I was the one, you know, sacrificing, working, knocking on doors, making cold calls, you know, learning as I went along, paying for mistakes, all of that, you know, to, to build that company. And yeah, that's what it takes. Yeah. And I just want to be really clear about something. I, I, I know the answer, but I just want to hear on video. Again, you would still do all of that today even though mm -hmm. all the nonsense is around this, because again, you believe, you believe in the American dream as much today as you did when you started it. That's a true statement. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's it's still alive and well. And for everybody listening, I mean, there's a lot of noise with the stock market speculation. There's a lot of noise with cryptocurrencies and speculation. I've been studying cryptocurrencies. I'm, I'm up to speed, you know, on, on that. And, you know, you can make some money, but you're not going to make tons of money. You're not going to make a hundred million dollars. All right. If you want to make a hundred million dollars, you got to go start a company. You've got to go get into real estate, you know, or you got to have a lot of money to start with and know exactly what you're doing in the markets or in crypto, or you got to go to work on Wall Street and manage billions of dollars for other people. That's how you make big money. That's how you make liquid money. Mm. You're going to hear the story about the Dogecoin guy here or there that made a couple million, but he didn't sell. So now he's going to lose it all. You know, so you're going to hear these stories about people that, you know, took those risks and took those chances, but it's few and far between. The people making big money in the stocks speculating and in crypto speculating are the ones that are putting a lot of money in and can and they're very wealthy already and they can afford to lose it Mm -hmm. the rest of the stuff is just little day trades here and there and that's okay people Mm -hmm. are making real money and you know but you've got to really know what you're doing and it's a hustle it's it's a hustle you Mm -hmm. know but it's fun and it's exciting and all that but the real money the real wealth if you want to be able to be lights out business go start a company you know, get into real estate. Um, you know, those are the things that are going to be long term for the long haul. And, you know, the only question is, what's the regulatory environment going to look like in those areas? What are the tax uh, environment going to look like in those areas? And, you know, where and how far can you really take it, depending on what it is that you're doing, where you're doing it. So there are some questions out there right now from from that standpoint, but the opportunity is still there just as strong today as it's ever been. Uh, and that's what I wanted to hear. I went back to listen to your interview over the weekend because that's what I need. I needed my Greg Dickerson jolt of positivity. I needed to feel good. And, and you're right. I do think the American dream is alive and well. Uh, I think there's a lot of noise around it. I think there's, um, you know, lots of people throwing, you know, stuff from the couch. But, you know, the economy, we, we are a capitalist system and the economy will expand or grow based on entrepreneurs. I firmly believe that. So, uh, any closing thoughts on this? Uh, I, I love the fact that the American dream is alive and well. It's alive and well. There's plenty of opportunity. You know, it's really the big corporations that are really under attack, you know, that that there is an unfair balance there that needs mm-hmm. to be leveled out a little bit. And almost sure. everybody will tell you at that level mm-hmm. that, you know, they agree with it, that the tax mm-hmm. code is unfair. Yep. Um, you know, that, you know, that that whole system uh, is unfair. It's all Wall Street's rigged. It's a game, mm. you know. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of inequity out there and inequality that needs to be fixed and needs to be made more fair to level the playing field. Mm-hmm. But there is still plenty of opportunity. And I'll tell you, if the corporate cat tax rate goes up to 50%, it's not going to stop, you know, anybody from starting the next company, you know, I'm just going to factor it into the cost of doing business. And, exactly. and, and you know, we are going to pay for it as consumers. You know, that's what, that's how it works. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of fun. Uh, this is uh I got everything I wanted out of this. I wasn't sure where it would go, but you nailed it. Thanks, buddy. All right.